Hey everyone, my name is Riley and in this video I am going to be showing you how you can build your own beautiful and professional Shopify dropshipping store. I'm going to be showing you everything over the shoulder step by step so that you are no longer confused by the Shopify menus, you understand how the entire dashboard works, how you can move and change sections, how you can change the colour of your site, add images, add legal pages, connect up payment merchants, and everything that you need to know about Shopify will be explained in this tutorial. This works for absolutely everybody, so by the end of this video, Shopify will go from something that looks super scary and technical to a very easy drag and drop website builder that you will be able to use with absolute ease. So to jump right into this, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that you get the extended Shopify trial as opposed to the normal one. And the way that you can do this is by going to the first link in the description of this video, going ahead and clicking on this link. And that is going to take you over to the extended Shopify trial where we can get three days for completely free. And then for the first three months, it's only going to be a dollar per month. So once you are on this screen, just go ahead and enter your email address in right here. And then once that is done, click on start free trial. It's then going to ask us a bunch of random questions right here. So we can just click on skip all at the bottom. Select the country where your business is located. So just choose where you are right now and then click on next. And then just like that, it's going to take us over to Shopify and we are now on the free trial. The first thing that we want to do before we go into the online store and we start customizing anything or adding our product in, is as you can see in the theme library, we cannot publish this theme because we are not actually on a plan. So the first thing that we want to do is just go over to home right here. And then as you can see, it says extend your trial for $1. It says one pound for me because I'm in the UK, but it should say $1 for three months on select plans. So we can click on select plan right here. And then of course, we just want to go with the basic plan. And then right here, we can go ahead and confirm the basic plan. Now, because we are on the free trial, of course, we are not going to be charged today. So we just select the monthly plan, click on confirm, enter your information in right here. And then you can go ahead and sign up for the basic Shopify plan. Once you have gone through and done that, if we now go over to the online store once again, you can see that this is how it will now look. And then as you can see, we can now customize this. This is fully publishable and we can actually publish this website, have this live and start sending traffic. If we go down here, we can see if we are in the theme section of the online store, the default theme that is set by Shopify is going to be the Dawn theme. Now the Dawn theme is not the best in my opinion. So if we go down here to the popular free themes, you can see these are some of the themes that we can use. The ones shown here are not all of the free themes. We can click into visit theme store. And then this is going to take us over to see all of the themes. You can see that we have 153 paid themes or 12 for three. And some of these paid themes are very, very expensive. Now, if you are starting out, I would definitely not recommend any of these themes. Make sure we are on free. And then the best themes that you can choose for starting out is the refresh theme right here, the sense theme or the taste theme. So if you are starting out, go for one of those three themes. I'm just going to choose sense for this example. So we can load up the theme and then click on try theme right here. And that is going to go ahead and add the theme to the online store. So just go ahead and wait for your theme to fully load in right here. And then we can simply go ahead and click on publish on this right hand side. And that is now going to be the current theme for our store. You can see that is now updated. From here, we can then click on this customize button on this right hand side. And this is going to take us over to the store where we can now go ahead and customize this. So this is the store layout that you will first be met with when you go in to customize your store. Now this can look very confusing at first, however, it is very, very easy and very simple to use once you actually know how things work. So to start out, we can see at the top here, 
we can change the page that we are on. So right now we are on the home page. If we open this up, we have a few different pages to go through. We have like blogs, pages, collections. However, because we have not added any of these yet, you can see these are all blank and we do not have anything added in. So this can be useful later. We will just go ahead and close this for now. Up in the top corner right here, you can see we have a few different menus to toggle through. So this is the desktop layout right here. We can flick this over to mobile where we can see how the store will look on mobile. And then we also have a full screen view so we can see how the store will actually look without these little menu bars on the side. Now each store is made up of three different sections. The header section, which is this top section right here at the top. Right now, this is made up of this announcement bar and the actual header itself. We then have the template. Now this is the main bulk, the main meat and potatoes of the store. And you can see that this will be preloaded with just certain sections that Shopify have added. So right now we have an image with text and we also have this featured collection. At any time, we can go ahead and toggle these off. So right now that is just hidden. It is still there. We can just not see it on the store. We can turn it back on at any time. Or we can also completely delete this by clicking on this trash icon. We can add in new sections by simply clicking on add section. And then we can choose from all of these different sections right here that Shopify give us. Then moving down, we have the footer section right here. And right now this is made up of the email sign up and also the actual footer itself. Now I will go into these in a lot more detail later when we actually go ahead and start customizing the store. However, the first thing that we actually need to do is go ahead and add a product. So if you have made any changes to your store so far, we can simply click on save and then back out using this button in the top left to exit back to the main Shopify menu. So to add a product, all we need to do is go up to this products section on the left hand side, click into products. And then as you can see, this area is empty because I have not added any products yet. And from here, simply click on add your product. It's then going to take us over to this section where we can start adding in these products. Now the product that I have chosen for this example is a baby teething ring. So I'm just going to enter the title here. And then in the description, we can either go through and just start typing out what the product is or something that Shopify recently added, which is super awesome, is this generate text, which uses AI to actually create the description for you. So we can click into generate text and then under features and keywords, we can type in baby teether helps babies teeth by soothing their gums when they bite into it. We can also choose the tone of voice right here. So whether you want this to be like playful, expert, persuasive, sophisticated, I'm going to go with playful. And then we can have some special instructions. So I'm going to go add some emojis and then we can generate text. Over here, it's then going to spit out the suggestion. So we can just go ahead and click on keep. And then as you can see, that is going to create the description for us. Moving down under media, this is where we can add in all of the product photos. So I'm just going to click on upload new and then upload these from my computer. And then as you can see, these baby teeth images have now been added in. So what we can do is we can go down and choose the price of these. So I could list these as $14.99 each. And then right here where it says compare at price, it's if you want to put these at a discount. So I could put like $30 right here. And then what this would look like on the site is it would look like $30 with a strike through. And then it would have the actual price next to it to make this look like it is at a discount. We can also add a cost per item and your customers will not be able to see this, but this is just for you to be able to keep track of your profits. Under inventory, you can see the SKU. This is just stock keeping unit. Not super important if you just have one or two products on the site, but if you are making a general store where you have hundreds of products, we could literally call this Tether, and it just helps us keep better track of this when people are making orders. Now moving down in the shipping, we can say if this is a physical product and then we can add the weight of this. And this just helps with shipping information later down the line. 
And then variant, we can also add in some new variant. So as you can see, my variants are in the form of color right here. So from variants, I would go ahead and choose color. And then I can add in a few different options. So one is pink, white, and blue. So I can say pink, white, and then blue, and then click on done. And then as you can see, all of these variants are now going to load in. However, they don't have an image next to them. So what I would do is click in here, and then I can choose the correct image for each variant. And this is how it is going to show up on the site. So I can select pink, white, and blue. We have the price next to it. And then in here under available, we can choose how many you actually have available. So in here, let's say we have a hundred available of each. We can just enter that in. And then every time somebody orders one new, this number is automatically going to go down. But then we can come back in here at any time and change this as we have more available. Now, this is all looking pretty good so far. We can also add new options if you also want to add another variation. For example, we might have different sizes, different materials, things like that. But I'm just going to leave this as this is and click on save. Once that is saved, we can then back out here and you can see that product has now been added in. So right now, this is visible on the online store. We can actually go ahead and take a look at how this looks. And right now, it doesn't look terrible. However, we are going to make this a lot better in a second. As you can see, there is the price that I was talking about. It was £30 and now it is at £14.99. So let's just go back and at any time, you can also add in new products by clicking on add product once again. And then you can go through and add in a new product. I just went ahead and created some new products right here. As you can see right now, we have about six or seven of these products. And what we can do is we can sort these into different collections. As you can see, we have some baby teasers, we have some teddy bears, we have some bottles. And the best way to actually go ahead and sort these on the site that gives us more freedom to play around with later is to sort these into collections. To do this, just go over to collections on this left hand side. And then we can see by default, they have already created this one collection. So let's just go ahead and delete this right here. Okay. And then we want to go ahead and create a new collection. So I can just go ahead and call this baby bottles. We can then go ahead and add a description for this collection. Now under collection type, we have two different options here. We have manual and automated. And in automated, what we can do is we can change the conditions. So this is where we can add product tags, where we can say if the product tag is equal to bottle, then it's automatically going to be added to this collection. So what I'm going to do is just leave that there. And then we also want to go ahead and add in an image. So I'm just going to add in this image right here of a baby drinking a bottle. And then we can simply go ahead and click on save. So that collection is now created. And then we can go back and we can see this collection is now baby bottles. However, we don't have any product. So to add the products into here, I'm just going to go back over to the main product section and then go into each of these bottles. So this one, the insulated baby bottle, I want to add to this collection. And then all I have to do, because I set up the tag earlier, type in bottle into tags. And then if I go ahead and tag this with bottle, I can then click on save. And now if I go back to collections, you can see under product, the product that I just added is now bottle because it has that bottle tag. So that is how you can add products to collections. We can create more collections by simply clicking on create collection in this top right corner. So I'm just going to go through and create one for baby toys. Once again, I'm going to select the collection type as automated and say this time the product tag is equal to toys. Add in an image right here and then I can go ahead and click on save. And then the final thing that I am going to do to make sure that all of these different products are in the right section is I'm just going to click into each of these and go down to the tags. And this one is toys. So I can add this as toys just like that. Click on save. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this for each of these. So if I now head back over to collections, 
you can see that all of the products have now been added to each section right here and we have these sections complete. Now you can add as many collections as you like. I'm just going to stick with two right here. So now that we have our products, we have our collections. Let's now go ahead and start creating the store. So I'm just going to click into online store down here, go back into our theme by clicking on customize. And as you can see, because this is a featured product section, this is automatically going to load in with some product. However, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this off for now. And then as you can see, I now have a blank section to work with. So the first section that I'm going to add in right here is a image with text. So I'm just going to go ahead and add this in right here. And as you can see, that section is now going to be added in. Over here on the right hand side, the main control panel for this section, this is where I can go ahead and play around with things. So what I can do is maybe change this around to here. And then for this image, I want to go ahead and add in an image of a baby play. So I'm just going to use the same image that I had before. And I can then go ahead and add this in. Just like that. As you can see, I now have that in there. Let's just call this brand G Force Babies. That's a terrible name, but let's just stick with it for now. So we can add this in there. And then we can also add some text right here. I'm going to use this generate text button again. I'm just going to say, give me a slogan for my baby store and let's make this playful. There we go. I'm just going to add that. And then as you can see, we have this first section in here. The next thing that I'm going to add is I'm going to go into add section once again. And in here, I'm going to add in a collections list. So if I go ahead and open this up, we can now go ahead under collections and add in all of these different collections. So I'm just going to click into here, go to select collection. And in here I can select like baby bottles. The second one can be the baby toys right here. I know it doesn't look the best because we also have the same image up here, but let's just ignore that for now. And then it would probably look better to have a third one right here. But because I don't have that, I'm just going to move this down to two. And then as you can see, we have this collections area. Now, what this means is people can simply click into here. If I just go ahead and show you on the actual site, let's go ahead and preview this. People come in, click on this section, and they are now going to be taken over to this baby bottle section. The image is at the top, and then you can see all of the products right here. So already this store is starting to take some shape. I'm also going to scroll down and add in a new section. And then in here, I'm going to add a featured collection just to show these products off more. We can then click into here and then choose the featured collection that we want to choose. So in here, I'm just going to choose the baby toys and then select that. And then as you can see right here, this website, let me just go ahead and change this image. Okay, there we go. This website is really starting to take some shape right now. In here, we can also change the text shown at the top. So I can just type in our range of baby toys, and then that will be changed right there. We can change the size of this, whether we want this to be small, medium, or large, and then we can make a few other changes. So that is kind of like the main bulk of the website. You can kind of just go around and play with these different sections and really see what fits your site. Like we can add a slideshow right here that has different images. And this is what I first did when I first started out with Shopify. Once you have a good understanding of how these things actually work and you know overall how the tool works, you can just play around with these different sections to see what you really like. What we can also do with these sections is move them around. So this featured collection, I can simply hover over and then click on these kind of like dots next to it and then move this up into all of these different sections. So I can add this at the top, I can move this down in the middle and really play around with how this looks. So that is the main template. The next thing that I want to do is go ahead in here and add a logo. So what I'm going to do is click into the header section right here. And then on this right hand side, you can see it says edit your logo in theme settings. So let's just click into that. And then as you can see, we can now put in a logo. So once again, this is just an example. I would not use a logo like this on a baby store, but I can simply add in my logo right here. And as you can see, that is going to change right there. 
another thing that I want to change is this announcement bar at the top. So I can simply click into this announcement bar right here. And then underneath, you can see it says, welcome to our store. So this is what I want to change. I'm just going to click into here and say, babies are cool. I have no idea what I'm typing here, but you get the idea. This is just how we can change things about. And then we can also add a link to a certain collection or a discount if you want to do that. The next thing that we are going to take a look at is this main menu right here. Right now we have home, catalog and contact. So let's go ahead and change this. The way that we do this is save the website and then we want to go back out and exit. And then once we are back here on the Shopify homepage, just go down to navigation on this left hand side. From here, we can then see the menus. And this main menu is the one at the top. As you can see, home, catalog and content or contact, I should say. So let's click into here and then we can go ahead and change this around. So I want to get rid of catalog. Let's delete that. Let's leave contact. And then we can add new menu items by clicking here at the bottom. In here, I want to add a link to baby toys. So I will type in baby toys and then we can click on this bar go down to the collection section and I can add in the baby toys. So let's add that. And then from here, I also want to go ahead and add in the baby bottles, of course. So we go here once again, collections, and then we can add the baby bottles. Once all of that is done, click on save. And then if we click into this, as you can see, this has now updated. And if people click into these, they will once again be taken over to that section. If I click on baby toys, we are now taken to the baby toy section. And if we click on baby bottle, we are taken to the baby bottle section. So we can see that the navigation menu now works. So let's go ahead and click into one of these products. And then you can see the product page right here. Now, the way that we edit this and the way that this is designed is the exact same as the homepage that we customized earlier, where we have all of these options down the right hand side. So right now you can see once again, we have the header here at the top. We have the template, which is the main section and then the footer here at the bottom. So we have a related product section. Once again, if you don't like this, we can just go ahead and hide this and then that is no longer going to be shown. Once again, we can click into this and we can choose like whether this is large, medium or small, whether this fits the page, it's the original size and everything like that. So right now I would say the product page looks pretty good, but once again, this is fully editable. So we can click into any of these areas right here and just go ahead and edit the entire thing. If we want to delete the description, if we want to, for some reason, delete these buy buttons, then we can go ahead and do all of that. But most of the time, your product page, the way that it looks right here is going to be absolutely fine. So we don't need to worry about that. What we can do though, is we can actually customize the overall color scheme of the website. As you can see right now, this doesn't look bad. However, I would prefer this to be maybe a blue color to fit in more with babies. So to change this, we can go over to the theme settings on this left hand side. And then as you can see, we have colors. So if we open this up, we can then go ahead and currently it looks like we are on scheme two, but we can go ahead and create our own color scheme. So I'm going to go in here and create a background radiant once again. However, instead of these colors, I'm going to make this so I want more of a blue color, maybe something like this, like a baby blue. And then for this button background color, I'm also going to make this blue as well. Everything else I can leave and just go ahead and save this. And then what you will notice is even though I just created a new color scheme, nothing on the website has changed. And the reason is because each of these sections have their own color scheme. So to actually customize this and change it to the color scheme that we just created, we need to click into each section and then on the right hand side, scroll down to scheme and then we can go ahead and change this to the color scheme that we want. Now I'm not actually going to change the color scheme. I'm just going to go back to how it was before, but that is how you can change the overall color scheme of your website. The final thing that we are going to do in terms of the website right here, is just go over to the mobile view and see how this looks on mobile.
as you can see, this looks pretty cool. I like how it looks and I'm happy with this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click save. And just like that, we are now done with the actual creating of the website. The next thing that we need to do is actually add legal pages to this. So to add your legal pages, you just want to go back out to the Shopify dashboard, click on the settings button in this bottom left corner. And then from this menu that loads up, just go to the policies. Now, this is a lot easier than it sounds. You don't have to go ahead and write full legal policies or even hire a lawyer. What we can do is simply go down to the refund policy, for example, click on this button to create from template, and then Shopify are going to load in the entire template for you. The only thing that you will have to change is these ones in square brackets. So you would just enter your return address in right here and then just go down and look for anything else that is in square brackets that we need to change. For example, this one, we need to input the date. But apart from that, it looks like that is the only thing that we need to do here. But we can just go down and check all of this. Once again, we just go down, create from template, we can check through, and we can do this for all of these different sections. Once that is done, we can click on save. And just like that, the policies have now been created. The only thing that we need to do from here with these policies is actually go ahead and add these to the bottom of the store so that people can come through and they are actually added to the store so people can click them. To do this, we once again want to be on this main menu of Shopify. And then all we have to do from here is go once again into the navigation on this left hand side, go into the footer menu this time. So open up the footer menu. And then for the search, we can just delete this. And then all we have to do is add menu item, go here and select the policies at the bottom. And then we can just add all of these policies. So there's the privacy policy. We can add this, then we can add the refund policy. And then finally, let's go ahead and add the terms of service. And then once these are all added, we just save the menu. And then if we check, we can see that these have not actually been added. So if for some reason this doesn't show up on your store, just click into the footer menu right here, click on add block, and then we can add in the menu. As you can see, that is now going to be there. I'm just going to delete this heading. And then they have now been added in. These are fully clickable and it takes us through to all of these policy pages. Once you have all of this, we can now go ahead and connect up the payment providers that you will need for Shopify so that people can actually buy from your store. To do this, we once again need to go into settings. This time from this menu, go into payments. And then as you can see, the first option is Shopify payments. This is by far the most important as this is what will allow you to accept Visa, MasterCard, Amex, and a few of these other cards. However, probably 80% of your purchases are going to come through one of these options. So all we need to do is click on complete account setup. I'm not going to run you through this as this is pretty easy, but you just enter your information in here, add some tax information, and then you can set that up. The second thing that we want to do is just add the PayPal and Amazon pay right here. So we can just click on manage and then we can go through and complete the setup for both PayPal and Amazon Pay right here. Once all of that is done, the last thing that we need to do is actually add a domain to your store. So once again, from this settings menu, we can click into domains, and then we have the option here to either buy a new domain or connect an existing domain. So from here, all we would do is click into buy a new domain, enter the domain we want, so G Force North Babies, just as an example. And then as you can see, this domain is only going to cost me $15 per year. So I can click on buy domain. And then I can just go through and buy this domain right here, connect it up to my store. And then I have a professional domain like this instead of this horrible domain right here. So that was my complete tutorial for Shopify. If you found this video valuable, don't forget to smash that like button and tap that subscribe button. And until next time, Take it easy.